Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Elite version 5 by DMC and Phil Smith. Before I bang on with this review, can I say please like, subscribe and check out cardmagiccourse.com. Uh, makes all the difference, especially the cardmagiccourse.com thing, actually and the like and subscribe thing. And you see a little cute little bell icon uh, next to the subscribe bit. Uh, check that and you will get notified of my live uh, ones, which are my live sessions are kind of random at the moment. So it's important that you do that so you sort of know where they are. Now. I'm, I'm glad to be doing this because I also forgot to review the Sharks uh, by uh, DMC and Phil Smith, which were kind of a reproduction of one of their one of their older decks, which are beautiful. So can I say that now? To, can I feel bad about that? I kind of just forgot I had them, um, even though I was using them sometimes. <laughs> I just forgot to do a review. So they're really good, and they're really, they handle really beautifully. These are all on um, uh, USPCC, I always get that wrong. Um, premium stock okay B premium stock so so that's what they are but if you like the design they're just they're absolutely stunning and all the designs of these cards are great uh, DMC and Phil have got together they worked together for a long time and they know how to design stuff I don't think anything uh, Phil's designed has, has been bad or or not really really nice and nice to nice to handle and in interestingly with cards I think that the design is very much integral to how the cards handle because it's a psychological thing if you kind of like the design of them and they suit you which which um, Phil stuff tends to suit most people I think then they kind of feel better in your hands I think that's important because there's not loads of different stocks it's kind of the it's all about the design isn't it but anything I digress of course because that's what I do um, so this is the the most recent one this has been going on for eight years they've been the, the, the first version of the Elite came out. Uh, I've played with the version before this and, of course, the Alphas, which were the the, um, the alphabetic cool ones, easy for me to say, um, which worked in the same way. And there's a lot... Of, I hope I don't forget. I've got it written down, but I don't want to look. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. First of all, there's the the tweaking, the, the idea that they've been working towards is creating the perfect deck of cards for for magicians and they know that that's a you know, i think i think in the copy and in the little sheet that you get with it and the in instructions uh, if you get the the book but you also get the the copy with it is that um they they know that's a big thing they know that you know that it's still a journey to get there they're not saying this is the one they're saying that we're, we're trying our hardest over years to create a perfect deck of cards for magicians but what makes it perfect okay well it's a marked deck um importantly as are the other ones the marks are you can see from miles away which is really important in dimly lit rooms and of course if you don't want to be getting up close to the mark cards this is the same as the last version and i think the marks are pretty much the same they have tweaked them they're trying to make them more visible and more invisible importantly um to the lay people and the, the people have never i've never done this and i've used these quite a bit no one's ever noticed it's, it's really once you see it it's incredible. Um, but the important thing is that this has the mnemonica stack in it. So they've chosen mnemonica because they say, you know, from listening to their customers, it's the most popular stack. And interest, interestingly, this whole thing is, the, the new versions are all about listening to customers. They say they listen to emails, um, they're printed on USPCC because that's what people wanted. Even the color, people um, gave feedback on. So so this is all from kind of, from, from surveying, uh, their existing customers and Mnemonica is seems to be the most uh, um, used stack. I'm not saying it's a better one. And I nearly said important, and it's not the most important one at all. The Aronson stack is incredible, uh, and to me they're both equally as good. But but this seems to be them. Whether in the future they'll do an Aronson stack, well I'm not sure. But the, they come from USPCC stacked, and importantly, the point is they have the the position of each card also on the back of the deck. And the deck can be spread either way for left-handed people as well, if you're wondering, because I know that lefties get a pretty bum deal. Um, wh whichever way you spread these, you're gonna see the markings, you're gonna see the position of the card. Now, I know some people, and I was kind of thinking, well, if you know the stack anyway, um, you know position of the card when you see it, but, and this is important, 
if you're anything like me and you perform with mnemonica and i have only just got re i've been doing it for years on and off but i've only just got really uh, competent with it but still i have brain melt sometimes or worry about it it just gives you that peace of mind to be able to look at the card and for it to tell you what position that card is in it also allows for certain tricks and the tricks that you will get if you get the passport um, to elites which incorporate this this new system into it it's also a really good, so they call it cognitive load, it lightens the cognitive load. So you know that you're going to get that helping hand, that le hand, that leg up when you perform these tricks. And also, um, it's a really nice learning tool. If you're learning mnemonic or refreshing it, you've got those on the back. Now, I know you can get kind of them right on them, but it's just really nice to have a deck that has those marking systems on it. And I've really enjoyed using them. The, the, the numbers as well give you that thing, again, which I know you can do with a stack, but it just makes it super quick of turning around and knowing the sequence that people have taken cards in. So when cards are out of sequence in the deck, as in with some of these tricks, it's really quick to see. And with the cards face down, of course, which adds that, that impossibility to it. The trick, I'm not going to go for all the tricks, but there's one called, a, what's it called? Stack wheel, stack wheel, yes, and it's based on the free wheel principle, and it's my favourite trick out of it, out of all of these. There are all the tricks are using this system, and like they've said, it's not to give you an expansive encyclopedia of the tricks you can do with this stack or a mnemonic lesson. It's basically to start getting you thinking about how you can use this. So you'll get tricks that use this, and not in the obvious way that you'd think. It's it, there are a couple of direct um, selection kind of tricks in there, but there, there's one where you sort of. You know, they take the free cards that they've chosen, um, you turn around and you know what card, and that you say move them around, you go through this process, kind of like a mentalism process, and you know what card they're, they're thinking of. You don't know what it's not what card they're thinking of, but you know what I mean. I've, I've completely butchered that, but you get the idea. But my favourite trick is this stack wheel one, which is a free will one, when, which I performed and completely floored people with. If you don't have the free will principle, we, we, this is with cards, but you can do it with, with objects. Uh, Mark Shandell wrote a great book on this. Uh, I always mention this because I still, I still have yet to review it. I'm so sorry, Mark, but I mention it as much as possible because it's really good. Uh, but some reason I just keep forgetting to do it, a bit like the cards, and that's kind of what happens. But there you go. Uh, very good. But that's, that's loads and loads of tricks on that principle. But what happens is you get someone to go through a process where they select the card themselves or three cards and then you say, right, you put one card in maybe your back pocket, uh, in your breast pocket or your side pocket and sell one or something. You have three different positions of the cards and then you tell them exactly what card they've put in each position. It's, it's really good. It's really super strong and it gives you alternative ways of doing this. Uh, I will say as well, the book also gives you a couple of tools like full shuffles and deck switches. Uh, which are really important to use when you're doing this stuff. You don't need them, but if you are working with a couple of decks, one stacked and one not, and giving the deck to people to shuffle, then you can switch them and it gives you a way of doing that. And it's not kind of knuckle-busting ways of doing it. These are all usable. And, and Phil and uh, DMC have sort of got together and made this usable. That's the thing. It's not kind of here we've added another thing that isn't, it's kind of just a thing to add to sell more. It kind of feels like that this is a bit of a passion project. And I know Phil is a brilliant designer. I don't know DMC very well, but Phil is a brilliant designer and tends, I presume, to take uh, jobs which either pay loads of money or are passion projects. And I'm presuming this is the latter. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be it's going to be one to retire on because nothing in magic ever is. But it's um, it feels like a passion project and all of their stuff does, which is why I like reviewing it. I'm just going to tell... Oh, there's one more thing. These are, have got... A uh, couple more extra things in them. They're one-way decks, and if you're a card magician, you'll know what that means, which helps as well. But they're also one-way faces, which is interesting. And I couldn't see um, the one-way face thing on it. And there's a trick that uses that. And and again, when I when you spread the cards and see the one-way cards face up to you, it's blatantly obvious. But to anybody else, it really isn't. So that can be really handy as well. Uh, I think that's everything I've mentioned. Let me just check. That's it. One more thing. Uh, it comes with a. A, um, a crib in it. So you've got the usual stuff in it, you've got the, the history of them, which is a nice history card there, and you've got the, the way to, the, to use the things of course with the one way and, and how that all works, but you also have a stack which kind of uh, gives you the, the, the mnemonic on it, so you can have that if you wanted to with you if you needed to if for help if you're on stage and stuff, but it's a more of a, to me, more of a learning tool. Um, but re really interesting, really nice deck and um, 
I'm going to be using it all the time. I used the, the other deck for ages. It's just such a lovely deck to use. I use it for the Stranger, the app, these, these mark cards, because no matter where you are, you can just bang that card down. You don't have to kind of get up close, as I said. Um, and they're really, really nice. And as I said, premium stock, so they're very nicely, uh, very nice to handle as well. So thank you very much. Have a great one. If you're watching this in real time, have a lovely uh, new year and Christmas, if I put this out before Christmas. I always say this, and <laughs> I don't know when it's going to go. But anyway, uh, have a great one. Stay safe in these very strange times. Take care. Oh, and check out cardmagicals.com and like and subscribe. Cheers. Bye-bye.